Fourth Grade Rats by Jerry Spinelli, Chapters 5 and 6. You're not funny. Later, my mother cornered me in my room. Okay, she said. Is that how dinner is going to be every day? A madhouse? It's not my fault, I told her. All I did was get promoted to fourth grade. My mother sat on the bed. Sudsy. Maybe you're taking this too seriously. It's just a school kid's rhyme, you know. I'm sure it'll pass over in a day or two. Sure, I sneered. Tell that to all the kids at school calling me a rat. Tell it to Zippernose. Tell it to Joey. What does Joey say all about, about all this? I laughed. <laughs> he loves it. He's glad he's a rat. He says it's nature's way. He says it's a step up to being a man. <laughs> she chuckled. The way to a man is through a rat, huh? I keep telling you it's not funny. You're right, she said. She spanked her own hand. There, bad mom. That'll teach me. I glared at her. You can forget it if you're trying to make me laugh. It's not working. She pretended to pout. Darn. Okay, no more funny stuff. You're miserable, and that's that, right? Right. Bath didn't help? Yeah, it did, till I had to get out. She snapped her fingers. Aha! All right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to call the school and pull you out of there. We'll hire a tutor to come in and teach you. She can sit on the toilet seat while you're in the tub. We'll serve you all your meals there. After a couple of months, you should be shriveled down to the size of a frog. I pointed to the door. Mom, out. Or maybe we could put wheels on the bathtub and roll you off to school each day. That would, Mom! She shut up. She stood. She was biting her lip to keep from cracking up at her own hilarious self. She took a deep breath. She put her hand on my shoulder. Tell you what, there's more than one way to become a man. What's that, I said. Go sweep the sidewalk. You'll be a man in no time. She looked at me. I looked at her. Joey's voice hissed in my ear. Say no to your mom. Joey's voice was no match for my mother's look. I got the broom and went outside. I swept the sidewalk. My father had just cut the grass. He was putting the mower back in the garage. His weights were in the corner. They were covered with dust. Dad, I said, do you still lift your weights? Haven't for a couple of years now, he said. I'm saving them for you and Bubba. Did they help you become a man? He looked at them. Oh, I don't know. I guess they helped me look like one. Can I see your muscles? He wheeled the mower into its place. He laughed. You haven't asked me that in a long time. You used to ask me every day. I lifted his arm to get him started. Well, come on, let me see. He put his hand behind his head and made the muscle. It looked like a baseball in there, or even a softball. Make it bounce, I told him. He made it bounce. I reached up and touched it. It was smooth and round and hard like wood. Pull me up, I said, like you used to. He lowered his arm a little. I don't know if I still can. You're not such a shrimp anymore, you know. I grabbed on with both hands. Hoist away! His arm started to crank up. My legs got straight. Then I was on tiptoes. Then I was off the ground. I hung there for a couple of seconds. Then he let me down. We went back out. We closed the garage door. I asked him if he used to take a lunchbox to school when he was in fourth grade. He thought. He nodded. Yep, I did. Did it have anything on the outside of it? Nope. It was just one of those old-fashioned ones, like Grandpa took to work. 
I wanted one just like his. No animals on it, huh? Elephants? Anything? He shook his head. No, afraid not. It was black, about as dull as a lunchbox gets. He opened the front door. How about swings, Dad? Did you ever kick a little kid off of a swing? He stopped. He looked at me funny. Where did that question come from? Somebody kick you off a swing? Oh, no, I said, heading inside, just wondering. When I pulled down my bed cover that night, I found a mouse trap on my pillow. Dad thought we had a mouse once. It was set with a little piece of cheese. I tripped it with the pencil. It snapped like a cat pistol and flipped halfway up to the ceiling. I grabbed the trap, charged down the hall to Zipper Nose's room, yanked open her door, and ripped the trap into the dark right about where she would be lying in bed. The phone rang. I didn't bother with the squawks coming from Zipper Nose's room. I picked up the phone. A voice whispered, Did you say no to your mom? Chapter 6 Joey Becomes a Man Nothing much changed during the next couple of days. First graders called fourth graders rats. Fourth graders bared their front teeth and snarled. First graders ran away squealing. I kept opening doors for Judy Billings. Judy Billings kept ignoring me. By the second week of school, the first graders were tired of the game. And without the first graders calling them rats, the fourth graders pretty much forgot that's what they were. Except for Joey Peterson. Joey was doing just what he'd said, taking care of number one. I don't mean he went around kicking people in the kneecaps. I mean, he did pretty much his own way. He didn't care what anyone else thought. One day in class, we had pretend elections to learn how government works. Joey nominated himself for president of the United States. Then he voted for himself. He even looked different. He got his hair cut practically down to the nubs, like Marine boot camp, he said. And he started wearing one of his father's old sweatbands around his head. He got a black marker and wrote number one on it. Joey was on his way to becoming a man. In fact, I think I saw him become a man right before my very eyes on a Thursday in the schoolyard. It was after lunch. We were just cruising around when a bee started flying near us. I hate bees as much as I hate spiders. So I took off flapping my hands. I heard Joey call, Suds, look. I turned around. What? Look. He was holding out his arm. I couldn't see anything. L look at what? He was keeping very still, staring at his arm. Come closer. I came closer and I saw. The bee was on his arm, crawling up and down. Gave me the shakes just to watch. Swat him, I whispered. He just kept staring at the bee. By now, other kids were coming over, gawking. One of them was Gerald Willis, the school thug. When Willis saw what was happening, he snuck up behind Joey and knocked Joey's arm from underneath. Joey's arm jerked up and the bee took off. But not for long. The bee made a U-turn and came right back and zap, stung Joey right on his arm. Kids shrieked. I think a couple of little ones fainted. Everybody rushed forward. A bee sting next to a car slamming on your hand. Probably the most painful thing in the world. Major agony. I tunneled through the mob. Would Joey be in convulsions? Conscious? Alive? He was grinning. He was staring at the little white bee sting bump on his arm and he was grinning he was a rat he was a man girls swarmed over him Ooh, 
Oh, Joey, it must hurt so bad. How can you stand it? Ooh, Joey, don't you want to cry? Oh, Joey, you're so brave. Oh, Joey. One of the girls was Judy Billings. Judy Billings followed Joey around the rest of the day like a puppy dog. I walked home with him, but so did she. And it wasn't even like I was even there. Joey, can I see it? For the millionth time. Whoa, it gives me the shivers. It's not even visible. Aren't you scared? I heard people can die from bee stings. Hey, look at me. I'm the one dying around here. You think we ought to go to the emergency ward? Barf! Can I see it one more time? Scream! Of course, she couldn't just look at it with her eyes. She had to look at it with her hands, too. I guess she had little eyeballs on her fingertips. First, she would touch the invisible sting spot and say, Does that hurt? And Joey would say, No. Then she would press it and go, Does that hurt? And Joey would look all cool and say, Nah. Of course, that wasn't enough for her. She had to start feeling the rest of his arm to see if it was swelling up. She said it was. He said it wasn't. So, of course, she had to switch over to his other arm and go feeling around that one to see how it compared. And all of a sudden, it wasn't about a bee sting anymore. Wow, your muscles are so hard. She didn't even see him clenching his arm. Girls are so dumb about that. Do you lift weights? She cooed. I lift my father's barbells, I said, crossing my fingers. She gave him a look like, D did you hear a voice? Is somebody else here? As for Joey himself, he was a little hard to figure. I had to admit, he wasn't exactly sucking up to her. He was letting her do all the talking. In fact, for a minute there, it even looked like he was trying to help me. He gave me a little jab and said to her, Hey, I happen to know another guy that has a pretty good muscles too. Not as good as yours, she cooed. Oh, yeah, he said. Even better than mine. And you know what? I think he likes you. Her eyes widened. Really? Yeah, really. And I bet you'd like him too. Maybe I would. She was blushing. I was blushing. Thanks for looking up. I was feeling good. Joey shot me a quick grin. Want me to tell you who it is? My face was burning. Tell her. Don't tell her. Tell her. Don't tell her. She gave him a shy smile. You don't have to. I don't, he said. No. How's that? Because I already know who it is. I was ready to faint. I wanted to crawl under the nearest car. Joey poked me again. Yeah? Who do you think it is? She giggled. She blushed even redder. She looked up and down the street. She cupped her hands and whispered into his ear. When she pulled away, she giggled again. She just gawked, he just gawked at her. She whispered some more in his ear. Then she ran off giggling down the street. We walked. Joey didn't say anything, so I did. Well? Well what? Well, who did she say? He shrugged. Oh, nothing. I grabbed his shirt and jerked him to a stop. Peterson, who did she say? He sniffed. He shrugged. He looked away. Me. You? Yeah. She thought I was making it up about somebody else liking her because I was afraid to say it was me. I let his shirt go. 
Oh, great. Good friend you are. He screeched. What could I do? I was trying to help you. Yeah, big help. I didn't hear you telling her she was wrong. I didn't hear you say you don't like her. I don't. You know it. You can have her all you want. Traitor, I said. Suds. Traitor. I went to the other side of the street. After a while, he called. Suds, it's Friday. Stay over at my house tonight. Never, I said.